Good morning everyone and welcome to the next episode of Tech Warning where I still drink some tea and uh, we are dissecting old web websites. And last time we have en ended up with uh, actually working redirect for the quest page. Uh, so let's see what we are up for today. Um, so downloads are good enough. Uh, because the migration script uh, that's going to go for the final switch. Uh, let me just verify by looking at it. Uh, and I need to look at the new version as opposed to old version, which I need Chrome for. But. This is the new version and it's properly displaying downloads. We don't have the discussion. That's the major one. And um, to clean this up, uh, figuring out the S3 into the infrastructure documentation that I will probably do offline because it would just be um, people uh, watching me writing what I say. Um, looking up the so let's take a look at this on the in the DB show. Uh, so let me source the virtual environment again uh, here as well, and it was DB show. Uh, so looking into Trinity, let's limit it to the first five columns. Okay, first one. Because you can see uh, whenever uh, something has so many attributes, uh, it's getting real broken. Let me see. Uh, this is slightly better. Um, and I think that the question was whether the read count uh, is actually used. So here it's zero. So let's see whether there is something that have that over zero. And the question is none. So we could as well drop that. Um, I don't think that we have it in any other creation page, so I mean, as useless as it is for the quests. Um, I mean, this is th the problem with those is that uh, since they can't really distinguish be, uh, from crawlers, it is kind of useless, um, especially once we uh, will make this page actually a uh, crawlable. So, uh, I vote for uh, removing that, um, especially now that the page is a bit less active. Yeah, what was that one? Oh, okay. Okay, so let me make this smaller again. And Let's make a bridge. So let's call this cleanup. And that was for item. Huh. And it seems seems like oh because it's uh, defined on creation so this is the one that we potentially add. Um, I think this this shouldn't have been in uh, creation at all. Should have had been uh, only the extension of the quests. 
Um, but now that he, we have it there, I think that it's actually not worth untangling. Um, let's just document uh, its dubious usage. So, it's uh, probably used uh, only by quest. Um, maybe worth uh, removing in the future from other attributes. Well, I mean, from other uh, creations. Um, and this for one, I think that I can commit directly to master. Let me commit that, push that. Keep the pipeline cleaning. Uh, so this is actually not only for Twitch channel. Um, Dovednosti dot hlasoval. So since story, let's let's use db check. Uh, uh, db show not show. And so this one is the skills. Um, And let's look at the first guy and the attribute let me make it wider than barely um, the attribute is voted so the third one oh okay So this looks like in that attribute we have been storing the IDs of users um, that casted a vote uh, for that particular item. I uh, don't see it used beyond uh, beyond that the beyond that uh, first few items though. So here it's still used. Still. Um, but not here. And there is null, so we can take a look at um, what is the distribution. Uh, so select counts. So is null and is not null. So my best guess is that this is a remnant of the old code. Um, since afterwards, uh, right, I think that I remember actually. So this is a remnant of the old code um, because originally um, the IDs of people who voted were stored with the table that it was relevant to, and later on it was decoupled um, to to different table that only contains references. So this should we should be able to safely drop this, um, but I say uh, let's leave it for cleanup after the old version is uh, shut down. Uh, so let's create an issue for that for the you know, very future. Uh, so clean up uh, 
this one. Since the recording of votes is stored in separa uh, separate tables, and this is only used, and this is a remnant of legacy code, of legacy approach. Um, and it is not used by majority of Anyway, uh, so uh -huh. why is common Z not working here? Why is this overriding my mouse cache? Um, let me set this for posterity. So, this is actually a potentially a uh, very good first issue for someone. Uh, it goes to very future house improvements and very far, far future since this is uh, only a cleanup. Good training for someone though. Okay, so this is checked, and let me keep this and uh, write a note to myself uh, that I should update the docs before the next podcast. Uh, so this is from number 53, um, but uh, beside that one item, Let's mark this done. So I will not move that one to done since I think that um, this, uh, in order for me not to forget to write the docs. Um, but let's move on to the next guy. And um, this was actually a feature for the creation authors profile. Right. Okay, so I yeah let's 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 do this one because it should be reasonably easy and I'm starting late today so uh, I may be doing a shorter episode so uh, let's make sure that we have something done. Um, branch name. Let's call it authors. And the idea that I got here is that if you look here uh, at the original website, um, where I would have to log in, and that requires me to deep into my one password. Uh, so let's do that. Keyboard. So, well, actually, let me log in in Firefox as usual. Um, so in here, uh, if you go to users and see one of the users online and go to their detail, same detail is used for people. Uh, like this is an aggregate, uh, both user profile report on their activity um, and a report on what they wrote. And uh, the the idea that I had uh, last time when creating when creating this ticket is whether it wouldn't be worth to uh, decoupling like author's profile 
uh, from the user profile. Also, um, because from the early day, uh, day of the page, if you look for example here and we sort it on the sending by author, um, you can see that some of those creations are without an author and they are from a third party site. We actually link here, usually the site would be defunct, is my uh, expectation. Yep. So, um, in order to cover this one and like to be able to also create an author's profile uh, for them, um, oh, this is 18 years old, this is cute, 19. Um, it would make sense to me uh, to, ma to basically create a creation author page um, that would show the author stats um, that will be creating a, uh, uh, using a whole lot of awful SQL queries uh, from the identity of the users. Uh, I'm thinking whether it makes sense from user experience point of view because um, this may be confusing. Hmm. I mean, if if I would say here that uh, this is user and let me sh be showing that on myself so I don't uh, show other people's data. Um, completely forgot about those uh, additional features. Uh, they were not used much. Well, more work to do. But that probably makes even more sense to the couple. Let's take a couple authors because this is like... Creating a separate profile. Creating a separate author profile from activity profile, uh, I th think would help us uh, both on user and technical level. Uh, so we have user profile. Uh, the question, the question also is whether it should be and an actual new database object uh, or just a page and basically virtual object. Um, but I think that, given how it works now. Doing that together with the data migration may make sense. I'm just thinking it because if, if uh, let's inspect the database again. Um, if we take a look what's in uh, uh, for example, in one of those writing tables, um, vice versa, skip 50, show one. Oh, we see uh, a lot of dashes. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, this is not good at the displaying uh, stuff that contains a lot of text. What? So ID name text and then other. Uh, uh, So I think one possible way to unify this is to really uh, add a new uh, creation ID. Uh, I think that this, I, I have no idea what happens if users change their email. Uh, like whether it's uh, coming from, like whether it's going to update all on the tables with uh, this email cache. And I mean, let's take a look. Uh, I mean, thanks for all the users who showed up, but uh, no, I don't want to be famous. Um, you can go spam with those links elsewhere. Um, I'm fine with the amount of fame I have. Um, so let's actually take a look at the original version. Uh, and somewhere in there, and my guess is here. Should be what happens with emails. Uh, let's reopen again with uh, Central European encoding. And take a look. So there's your icons. Uh, this is about people updating. Personally, yeah. This is subscription to mailing lists. Ooh, uh, this is about predispositions to how, how data is shown. Well, okay. Uh, let's take a look at my settings there. And uh, just see whether this is sent to the uh, PHP I'm looking at. Is there a form at all? Here. Yep, so Mr. settings safe, that's where I am. And uh, this column is called email user form indeed. This goes through some basic sanity checks. Mailing lists are updated. It is updated in the user table. And that's it. So we have potential inconsistent historic emails in there. Uh, I mean, step one, we can keep that. And this is worth documenting. So let me, let me open docs. 
Um, Pages, private pages, administration pages. Migration and coexistence. Uh, so let's call this um, discoveries. And I like guess say data model. So the attribute was auto and alt mail. Okay. The duplicate it's well duplicated. <laughs> the normalized. Uh, autors email and alt mail is never updated um, if user changes their email and settings. Uh, so Let's follow on the user model. Well, let's call this outdoor model. Uh, so, outdoor model. Uh, so, in order to bridge uh, the confusion between uh, article source and auto writing. Uh, so this also had an email for some reason. Um, We are creating a new model and let's call it outdoor. Uh, this contains frame keys if discovered and allows future normalization of data. Okay, so um, let's go for the user model. I mean, actually, no. Let's create an author.py and the class is going to be author and it is one to one field uh, to user which can be blank. And it has one too many with creation. Right. Yes, because uh, 
author can be only one user but has multiple creations and that is well actually and we are not doing that for user we are uh, doing that for user profile so from users import the user profile if I'm not mistaken yeah and this is going for user profile um, and it's not from dot dot but from dot and from creations import creation And let me check whether many to one means that it should be done on this side or on the creation sites, because I'm not sure. So if reporter writes an article, uh, right, okay, and many to one would be. Uh, what is many to one? Um, many. Right, what is many to one for then? This makes sense. I'm making a uh, life for myself to complicate it. So. Creation. goes for author uh. oh oh you know, out, uh, check author versus author. That has a potential for fuck up. Um, what would be a better name? I'm not sure. So let's roll with that. Uh, that uh, relies on being equal with um, string equal actually uh, with uh, user profile dot make view at all so that's going to be the foreign key and it goes to outer and on delete it should be set to null um the undelete option Delete models dot set no okay. Set no which means that this has to have uh blank true and null true. Uh, and 
and uh, I should be not know uh, in the future uh, know about for transition period. Which let me set that as a cleanup uh, for the far future, which is um, like uh, creation dot alter not no. That's also a good first issue, and also definitely. Very far cleanup idea. I think that maybe there should be actually a cleanup uh, label. Exactly. That's not quite not Im uh, not imp not important or not impacting because it will improve our life. But um, clean cleaning up the fault of migration. Okay. We will have our router. The outer uh, is going to have a type and it's going to be either human or source. And the question then becomes whether sources should, ex I mean, to be purely clean, sources should also be uh, a model. But given how we are approaching this, I am actually calling this on this object. So in case it's user, it's a link. In case it's source, um, everything is normalized here. And uh, I think that I can, yeah, let's not have uh, something else than type. Since type is a keyword, I uh, can have an attribute called uh, type. Mm. Let me think. Outdoor. Let's call it auto type. And that's going to be a choice field. And I've been using. Uh, oh, so it should be. Well. Can choices be on integer field? Following are, are available to all field types. So I theoretically can.
I mean, let's, since we are using ANN for approval traces, uh, I guess let's do it for the types as well. So it's going to be uh, author.user, which is dangerous, so user type this and source type or like poof, website is what it should be actually uh, and we're going to put in char field and it doesn't have to be misencoded and uh, the max length is going to be one we will have no default and it's going to be not nil and uh, choices is going to be those two doubles. So, and since you're going to display it, it should be uh, in check, I guess. Okay. Um. I'm unhappy with this. Anyway, so. Uh, uh, we are going to fix this error first. Do we have a circular import? Cannot import creation from creations because right because it imports author uh, fair, but also this can go to creations. So let's drop this. Um, hello. Oh, I've made this before, mistake before, haven't I? Yeah. Well, somehow. Visual Studio doesn't like trashing. Theoretically, I could also do creation author to make it more distinct. Uh, but since this is the main form of authorship on the website, uh, let's keep it that way. Uh, in other cases, uh, yeah, all, all cases I can think of, uh, everybody else is going to be uh, just a user. Are we going to have an author? We shall create a URL for it. So we're going to display it. And it's going to be it can be in the same form. Uh, so let's call it our 
It will have an ID. And it will have a slug. Where slug is going to be slightly complicated for the websites. And it's going to be author profile and author detail. And in views that are starting to get slightly out of hand size wise, uh, we are going to have. Um, Give me user profile as a start. Uh, so, outdoor profile, slug depending on the type, and outdoor ID. And we need to import outdoor from create from models. And in order for it to appear in models, we need to, we don't need to import it in NetPy since we put it in the creations in the end. Um, in which case, uh, author is just going to be uh, get object of 404. Now, Outdoor detail and it's going to be question is uh, should it be the same template for uh, websites and for humans? Well, let's start um, designing and see where it goes. Uh, so. I mean, you know what, let's put it into creation and outer. Since there's not going to be anything else than this detail view, I mean, uh, worst case, will the outer list there. Uh, let's call it outer detail to be consistent, okay. Uh, but it's only tied to creations. Uh, so let's use that as a starting point and use this one and uh, uh, creation, the creation authors should be public. So uh, that's going to be creations, uh, author detail. Well, there we go. So, Let's call this author name and figure out how to get it. Uh, so name's going to be a property. Uh, let's just for the purpose of testing. Um, Let's return author name and somewhere. So, for example, well, let's start by uh, making this work. Uh, right. Let's remove that import. Uh, so in here, uh, well, let's start by 
You're excellent. Right, because we're selecting uh, everything from that column. So the moment we have extended the model, uh, we need to run the migration. <sighs> I mean, sure, why not? Uh, so make migrations. Uh, and the name should be outer. Hemp. So let's take the common article list. And see how we're doing. Outer link. This is not very normalized. This is why I had there a note that maybe this should be decoupled. Uh, So for again for the purpose of debugging, uh, let's do here a dot outer dot name. Uh, not enough to make migration. One has to actually migrate as well. And create the visit out. Uh, oh, this is going to be one of those uh, jungle versus my MySQL situations. Foreign key constraints incorrectly formed. Uh, can we take a look? Wait, this was. Um, Let's take a look at our locals and at the bug temporarily. Is it going to show us what SQL commands are we running? Yes. So create stable author. IT integer auto increment not null primary key. This draw is long text which is a bit of an overshot I would say. Um let me This should be converted. So let's make this uh, char field and uh, max length uh, 255. And if you're going to go over that, let's fix it in the data. And we don't have to use the f uh, wrong encoding since if you're going to do the migration in the Django framework, we should we should have the correct enco uh, encoding to compensate for the uh, fuck ups. But the user ID integer null unique. Yes. I have a feeling mm. 
that we have created a table but not the frame keys because is, is there not, not nil bank true not true eh? should be fine well um, let me add a note because I think that uh, the only thing how to redo this test is for me to download a new like a new copy of database and run the migration again I don't see any other reasonable way uh, so uh, I do download production database and uh, test uh, outer migration. All right. This wasn't encouraging. Can't create table because of bad frame key. And then it worked. Well, this is what, this is why it's important to lock stuff. <laughs> uh, so those inconsistencies doesn't happen. Part of that goes on uh, my SQL because this is not done in transaction. Uh, Okay, and now char field is not defined. Yes, because it's models that char the fields. Right, but if I do fake, do I have those attributes? One is a way to find out. Let's look into the DB show. Uh, so, um, description, but okay, maybe this changed. Um, thought so. Let's describe. Okay, so we do have this outer ID. So the foreign key SQL commands went well. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it went well for all of them, but I don't know. Okay, now it's getting tricky as usual. Um, so if we actually start the server and go here, then the outer would be outer's name if it would exist. And now we have to figure out how to prefill the data. So we can make the link actually. Um, call. So this is a data migration, but we're going to be doing this iteratively and multiple times. Uh, so it's probably worth to make a command out of it. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, that uh, needs creating commands subdirectory. Uh, let's look it up. Yeah, that was the case when I was young. Um, yep, management commands. So, management commands. 
right, I could have written the right thing, but just slash um, edit and the file. What's the name of the command? Uh, migrate authors. It is younger management command base and command with help. We'll have no arguments. So migrate. Well, it normalizes autos from like I said, goes to our table. And handle. Okay. Uh, so from DBCZ models, let's import author and creations. And for creation in creation objects all. Um, this is go going to be a lot of SQL commands, but no regrets, I guess. Um, I'm thinking whether it's worth having an author's cache in memory. Um, because otherwise the all is going to be cached anyway. Uh, sorry, so authors is going to be uh, author objects all. Well, no, we are going to be searching by author names. So, uh, and it's, you know, small enough number that it, uh, it will fit in the memory. Um, But uh, author's name is only going to be viable for uh, for authors. Ugh. Can I do a lookup by tuple? I think I can. So uh, let me verify that if I have a list with tuple, uh, that's going to be a string, uh, then whether searching a new instance of that tuple, well, in that list that I haven't cached, uh, is going to return true, because I'm not sure. Cool. So apparently this works on new instances. So let's do uh, tuples of author type and name. This is not going to be needed for a while. And the name. If it exists. So this forces us to actually do this. <laughs> uh, so if self Outdoor type is user, and then we are returning uh, the nick. If 
uh, it's a website. Then we are returning the URL. And else, uh, this is attributor, I guess. And don't forget to write out what type we have detected because it's invalid. The only th uh, other thing that's missing is that uh, the source, the website, which I can actually now name properly, uh, I can't because I have run the migration. Um, but I'm going to be uh, redoing the migrations anyway. So let's call it website and web website email. Uh, good enough. So let me one last thing is uh, can we have sparse unique? Because if the website exists, then it should be unique. If it doesn't, uh, but we should allow for multiple nils since this is how all users are going to look like the z disadvantage of mer merging this into one table um, but that is rectable and it should be a one-time data sanity check um, so let's start by um taking the uh, type and the name uh, and for every creation if the creation author doesn't exist then if we have If the creation uh, author doesn't exist, then um, creation author is going to be uh, retrieved from another method, so we don't go crazy. And let's pass the whole creation object. Uh, if the creation author does exist, then this is already resolved and we don't have to do anything. And uh, let's save this guy. So I'll get the author. So this cache actually is going to have to be instance wide. Uh, so. Let's call let's pass it on and uh, let's start by having this empty. No. We don't have to put it here. Uh, 
it's enough to do it at the start because you're filling it anyway. Uh, wait, so let me hit a lot of uh, undos and uh, finish this uh, because this is for outer in outer objects all. So need little less comprehension and let's move on to get outer if we have outer objects. And since we have Ugh. We have to return the outer object. So this cache doesn't make sense. Well, we can make it a dictionary. This could be a dictionary comprehension as well, but. Um, Let's not push it. So, authors is going to be a dictionary. Uh, mapping this lookup tuple uh, to an actual instance object. Um, not memory efficient, um, but you know, with our amount of authors, it's fine. And in here, uh, also this is exactly where you shouldn't uh, just be renaming stuff, but using refactoring functions. And this is a tuple. Um, and in here, we are look it up. And if it is, if this that does, that does exist indeed, then it's cached. And we can return it. Sorry, I just uh, for some reason wondered where I don't have a typo in author. I don't, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> and in other case, uh, we must create a new author uh, of that type. And we're not going to resort to where well, we, we have to resort to types. So this is outer regardless of type. And now um, if the creation, this is what was weird. Uh, if the creation, Right, this is why it felt weird. Okay, uh, so if creation contains uh, the author in its textual form, then the author type is uh, author dot uh, user type. Otherwise, it's uh, author dot website type. And in that case, uh, author name is without H here. Author name is creation dot author. 
If not, then author name is creation.stry. If we have this, then we can use the type name tuple to look up in the dictionary. And if it is there, um, then that can be used to return the instance. If it's not there, then we need to create a new author. Uh, well, if the author type uh, is author dot website that's easier we return the new author instance the one created in database so uh, objects create and uh, we put in uh, uh, wait, we have decided to actually use sensible names, right? Website and website email. Website and website uh, email is creation dot email. No. We can't just return it because before that we have to append it to the cache. Uh, so self authors, not author. Uh, and the tuple is author type, author name is going to equal to this instance and then we can return the instance and this will happen for both types so we can put it in the end uh, and we just uh, have to change the way we're creating author because here it's going to create an instance of user profile uh, so author uh, still going to be outer objects creates, but in this case it's uh, user equals the user profile lookup, right? So user equals user profile that we haven't imported. Um, dot objects dot get and we're going to be looking up solely based on Nick and let's talk later let's talk later about um, whether this is worth the normalizing to the outer object because I would say that it probably is and it will probably need its own uh, handling um, but this should do us what we want um, yeah, severely not tested But let's see where we fucked up. Creation has no attribute objects. But it filled here, so outer does and why both are models.
37. I mean, it is a class other. Classes are inheriting from, but. Right, because uh, I've marked it as abstract. Oh. Well, this sucks. So since this is an abstract class, uh, we can only invoke that by manually walking through all the subclasses. And I'm not sure that it's possible to do that programmatically. So this will be a lot of iterations. So let me get inspiration from here. Uh, and we will not need create page. This feels weirdly incomplete somewhat. Um, but I think it is because everything is really under common article. And we, I mean, in views, how am I handling the objects this way? So okay, so maybe you want to have creative page. And we recreate authors and then uh, I cannot learn on this. It's creative page. It's a uh, or page in creative page objects all. We will get the model class and in here we go for well. Um, models. We're going to precede it with some from above and then we're going to append to it here. Um, and I do wonder, I think that creative page is possibly going to help with all right, this is going to give us all of the other items. So actually, this may help. So 
So we need author and creative page. And that's it. Um, so for creation model in creation models, uh, we'll just have to iterate on them all. Okay. No, not what I wanted. Um, this was oh, Django apps, import apps. Okay. Um, here. Cool. Okay, so now we have a first case of where we have a nick that doesn't exist in the other stable, and I do wonder whether it means that it was not. defined at all or if it's just case insensitive so let's see hmm. that links perfect So uh, another question is what to do with data inconsistencies. <laughs> and I guess the answer for this for now is to log it. So let's do this and catch um, a user profile does not exist and um, Print it. And this should give us some idea. Uh, right. Python to user here. Command object has no attribute author and thirty eight so self authors, of course. Okay. I 
lot of inconsistencies, huh? How could this happen? Like, we are literally just creating it. What? Um, is the one in that is linking to user profile? Uh, it was saved without any. Like, come on. Um, error modes. So. Fortunately, we can afford to. Change this, but. Uh, main question is how come it has saved? when we are uh, setting an empty string uh, whoa because it's empty string and not no uh, so now it should fill with oh no all right well i know where the where the buck is uh, but what i want to do is to fix the model uh, so it correctly screams error. Right, but uh, it will not work earlier in here because we're just not properly setting type. So uh, let's fix it. Fix it that um, you have to do outer type is equal to outer type. And once again, in my life, I'm at odds with Linter. Um, huh, so it is not a problem. And the reason in get cached value. Get cached value. What? Fill manage by. Uh, we are on the line fifty one. Outdoor. Matching query does not exist. Right, because we have saved authors somewhere. Uh, and uh, I have deleted the corresponding table. So we need to uh, update it there as well. And the trick is, I don't know in which table. Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, so let's start with the first pages object. Uh, so common article. Um, yep. So 
updated. And we will run into a different bug. And I'm again at odds with Python too. So let me Well, yeah, uh, Python 3 catching multiple errors. I mean, I do have a tuple. Uh, oh, it's using the S keyword, right? Instead of uh, the. Uh, I, I think that the. the Comma is for catching multiple exceptions, and S is assigning them to variables. Mm. Mea culpa. And I have forgot a dot here. Typers, okay. And duplicate entry for user ID, which almost sounds like I'm not appending properly. Let me see, cached. Also, you can see how this is almost uh, asking for extraction and uh, tests. Question is also whether I shouldn't uh, edit to cache here. And it almost sounds better, but it shouldn't change anything. I'm properly caching authors. This is the cache it on the next iteration. And where this goes wrong is here where I'm doing Duplicate ID of user ID. Which should only happen if it wasn't cached properly. Author type, author name, or the cache wasn't hit. which may happen if there is a bad author type assigned is my guess uh, so first let's fix this So of note, it's it should probably call be called uh, user URL, but so select or from the CZ authors and user ID is hundred something. This is done correctly. So 
IV6 shot all just out of curiosity. How many rows have we successfully migrated? Some. Our caching is not working correctly. Outer type, website type, outer type, outer name and self authors, returning dictionary, assigning instance properly, on cache me. Miss well, if there would be anything else to, uh, yeah. yeah so type we are creating a new object, so the problem here is that um. This is not registering correctly. Uh, so let's look it up for this particular ID. I mean, debugging, debugging with live data. Uh, so if creation, uh, wait. Um, Can't easily look it up because the hundred seventeen that is a result of the uh, user object lookup. So it's kind of harder to say uh, which other is it. I mean, uh, which creation is it? Um, but I mean, we'll have a lot of output that um, that's survivable at this scale. Also, we have the bug info actually. So we know that it's a um, nick case, we know 173 is the primary key. Uh, what model? Uh, so it's a special, special item for thief. And we're failing the lookup. Hundred seventeen non non user. special in it. Uh, so let's just pr uh, say let's just make sure we are on the same page so um, outer dots User type uh, and oh, Nikis in self authors and then let's kill this. So false indeed. Um, so 
objects for outdoor objects get user is user object uh, just get under seventeen. The profile, I mean, and it's a primary key. Wow, okay. So someone is saying uh, wait, how them seventeen is this user profile object? Um not his outer object. So um his primary key is six. So we are hitting him here. So after we add him, what is the state of self.outers? Oh, do you see the problem? For fuck's sake. Uh, so, we are going to have some case sensitivity issues. Because lookup is case sensitive, whereas the um, Tuple is case insensitive, and then the question becomes whether we have conflicts there. I believe we don't. I mean, if so, it's uh, creating a bunch of other problems. Um, uh, so let's lower the author's names. Well, this is running. So this should give us that prefilled table uh, that if we do run server, over time, once this finishes, uh, we should have a reference here. And I think that I'm going to end it for today, uh, since I'm starting to be hungry. But tomorrow, let's take it from here. Um, let's take it with the user's medallion and let's just first uh, do this. We have an encoding problem. An encoding problem is the someone in the outers used the Unicode quotes and that doesn't properly decode in where it's a good creation order
in encodings, but my guess is that sh this should explode in our magic model. But apparently it explodes on the MySQL connection level. Neat. <laughs> Neat. So this is wrong on database level. Let's see whether Google knows this. It does actually. Is this a single Is this a single uh, line? I mean, a single art article. Mm, not sure if. Yes. Okay. So I guess that the additional one for me is to fix this one since this is a manual out. Someone entered this manually without any relation to any user. Uh, so this is another level uh, that we have to account for as well. Um, I do wonder why it refuses to encode properly. And uh, the answer may be that I'm not sure whether this isn't um, this happens during reading, right? Not during writing. In which case, it may be hmm. This is misencoded char field, so that should work. Um, but uh, right, but this is not in our magic. This is for connection settings. So this is because it's a Unicode character in something that should be Latin too, and Python explodes as opposed to trying to render this correct. So lame. Well, I mean, because it's encoded in Windows NCP 1250, I str and it's reading it in ISO before I do my mumbo jumbo. So this is where it ex explodes. But fortunately for this case, it's uh, fixable by fixing it in the data. Uh, I would think. That said, uh, uh, it will probably also explode in uh, if only I would remember my password. Um, right, it had some requirements, right? No, so let me change it. Um, help. <laughs> uh, 
change password. I just do wonder whether it actually shows uh, the password on the back open. No, so cool. Um, but if I go there and look for this, it will not show anything. Um, This is based on ID, so if I manually go and try this ID, it renders in admin, come on. This is disappointing. Also, it should be searchable by this. Mac. So it it is handled in admin. So something is different here. And um, I will leave this for tomorrow, though. But like, it should export now quickly since this is uh, this should all be cached. Salt cache. Hmm. So it is the it is the way I do look up. So if I would be if this would be done by primary key, it may work. I mean, if we would be printing uh, the author name for the record, uh, then it renders correctly. And I actually do wonder whether during lookups we don't have to use the formation encoded fields. Um, we don't have to use this weirdo. Yep, that fixes it. Okay, uh, so this is actually a significant new learning. Um, so the misencoding of the fields happens transparently. Uh, but for lookups, it does not. So for, for all string-based lookups, that needs to contain the that can contain the misencoded fields 
This needs to be appended. Wow, okay. Oh, let's take a look uh, in the documentation. I'm not sure where to put it. <laughs> this is just like... Major warning, uh, expectation mismatch, uh, it's not going to work as you think anything works. Um, I think that I've been reading this somewhere potentially. Uh, here. So warning. And searching. While encoding is handled transparently on the middle level, it isn't through doing database lookup. All lookups, all, all string lookups on a uh, misencoded char field or misencoded text field has to use a in a model checks get fields value fun uh, so let me make an additional ticket to make sure we have this everywhere Make sure all lookups are enco encoding safe. This is a good first issue for someone who would like to help. Uh, this should go to production ready because otherwise it's going to get this. This is raising five hundreds. So this should be done. All right. Neat. So um, thanks everyone for taking a look today. And uh, I will continue tomorrow uh, with making this separate creation alter profile and uh, looking up what happens after migration. So thanks for the time and attention and uh, see you soon.